Hey YouTube, what's going on? It's Eric back with you. Um, we're gonna get started on this uh, head stud install. So, so far what I've done to the motor, let's flip you guys around real quick and show you, is I got the oil cap off, nothing crazy, but I disconnected the injector harness. I wanted to make sure I got that done first. And then if you can look, see if I can show you guys coming down here. You can see the top of the fluid damper. It should show TDC, top dead center. And what I'll do is I'll come underneath the truck so you can see that. Um, see how I did that? Pretty much put a, a half inch socket on there, 15 millimeter, on the center of the fluid damper. Put the uh, ratchet on there and uh, started turning it. I was going to trade it out and put the uh, barring tool on there, but I couldn't get the nuts loose, so I got top dead center. I'm going to keep it that way. Here's Tucker. He's the supervisor of this whole situation. Uh, he's the shop dog. He's our, he's our buddy. He's our fur kid, about six years old, but uh, yeah, he'll be watching us make sure we do everything right, keeping us honest. And then now what we're doing here is just uh, removing these studs that are on top, not studs, but little uh, bolts. They're eight millimeter um, nuts that hold the wire harness to the injector. Be careful not to like over torque them. When you're pulling this, just be careful not to lose any of the bolts. They all stay on there, but at the same time, just be careful with it. You don't want to bust this up. This could be a very expensive mistake later on down the road. nuts want to stay on there all right now that we got the uh, harness off we're gonna take this rocker box cover off right here there's seven of these there's one two three four five there and then there's another one right here and one on the back so loosen those up there's 10 millimeter and then pull the rocker box cover off all right now that the bolts are removed let's see how hard this thing is to get off oh that was not bad at all just make sure you don't hit any of your injectors and dink any of those stuff you do not want to mess those up Now that I got the rocker box off, you can definitely see, you know, everything. I'm trying to think. <clears throat> it looks like all the studs are exposed, but I'm sure. Nope, no, they're not. So one over here. <clears throat> I'm kind of nervous about doing the valve lash, but like I see this one is loose. This one isn't. We're at top dead center. All these ones are pretty loose. So I'm guessing top dead center thing right but this one the number one cylinder is freaking tight <clears throat> let's see how the back one feels loose number six is loose five is somewhat tight next step is just pretty much removing the rockers and we got the uh, access we need so, here we go all right, now that I got the uh, rockers loosened up, I'll show you guys how I did that real quick. I probably don't need to show you. It's just loosening those 10 millimeter bolts. Just be careful because some of the valves that are closed, you're going to need to loosen those off. And as the springs decompress, it'll get loose. So just take your time with that. And then I'll switch you guys around here. And this is use some little uh, Christmas leftovers. We're little small plates and I got napkins in each of these. And then I just labeled them. So you go down here, one, two, three, four, five, six. And that's where each exhaust and uh, intake rocker arm will come. I'm gonna try to leave the, uh, the bridges on, the Y bridges on, but we'll see how that goes. Um, once I get that off, it's now it'll just, after that, it'll just be a one for one replacement of the ARP head studs. And as you said, we got them over here. I got the diagram right here that shows you how to take them off, what order. And then over here is our actual head studs. Here's the lubricant. And what I did was there's four, there's I think what, six of them that are longer than the rest of them. And what I did was I found out which one those were and I wrote long on there. So 
so I don't screw it up and put that in the center. And here's our um, our nuts and then our washers. So yeah, let me go take the uh, rockers off and then uh, we'll go from there. One thing I didn't cover was the instructions I'm going to be using. I went to Glacier Diesel Power Performance. You have these basic instructions that come with the box or with the kit from ARP, um, but they're kind of vague. Um, they do give you the basics of what you need to do, but it also tells you just how, the, how to do the uh, torque sequence. If you come over here, this one's going to show you every little step. It kind of breaks it down for you. And then it shows you torque that you stud to 100 pounds. And then what I like to do is I'm going to do them in the 15 pound increments. So that way I'm stretching them and I'm not just going to blow them up. Instructions are nicely clearly labeled. It shows you the cutout that you're going to need to do for that uh, stud that needs to go in right there. It shows you the before and then the after. So yeah. And it also shows you how to do the valve blast adjustments. It gives you the nice measurements right over there. Sorry for the crappy lighting. Um, but yeah, it's going to show you that. So that's how we're going to do that. All right, I got my sequence over here of how I'm going to do them. And what it says is one, two, three, four is my is my first bolt. So if I'm looking over here, it's going to be one, two, three, and then this is four. So this will be my first bolt that I'm actually going to take out and then actually replace it with a stud. So they're all the same. It's just the, the sequence you got to do them in. So I'll show you guys that here shortly. It's not actually too bad. One bolt out, 23 to go. There she is. Now in order to lube these, I'm not gonna lather them up crazy. I'm just gonna dab a little bit inside the threads. There you go, something similar to that. I don't know if you can see it, but where you can kind of see through it, there doesn't need to be a whole lot. Some people want to overdo it and look crazy, but your your washer doesn't need anything. So we'll go to the truck now and then put the first one in or lock her down. What I was talking about earlier was just taking this and just doing a 180, and that should be it. And so all you should need to guys I'm like a little over halfway there I got I think I'm on number 14 or 15 I just finished no I just finished number 14 so I got about 10 more to go I'm starting to get to the ones that are in the very back of the motor and those suck I've been leaning over my truck all day As you guys can see it's a little step ladder trucks on a six inch lift so my lower back's killing me my hamstrings are killing me but uh, we'll go up and take a look see what we got <laughs> so far they're coming out fairly easy um, it's just hard to tell if they if the stud itself is actually rotated when you're putting on the nut I try to clock like the on the, on the stud itself it says ARP 625 so what I try to do is 
find a position for the ARP or the 625 and say, hey, it's at five o'clock. And then when I go put the nut on, I just make sure it stays at five o'clock or if I need to adjust it, I'll adjust it back to where it was. So I was using my uh, paint marker, um, but I was, I'm not gonna do that with everyone. I just kinda got tired of it. I was tired of messing with it. Um, I'm updating. I had a little update not too long ago on Instagram showing everything that I've done. Pretty much what you guys have seen on the bench with uh, how I have it marked out. Um, and then you're coming over here. Here's the old head bolts. And then I'm just doing a one for one. So you see everything I'm using. <clears throat> It'll be fun doing the valve lash on the rockers. I'm not looking forward to that. Um, Hopefully we'll figure it out. It doesn't need to be adjusted, but we'll see. Wish me luck. I'm getting tired and getting worn out. This isn't fun leaning over this truck, but uh, somebody's got to do it. So a little over halfway there. We'll try to knock out the rest of them tonight. All right, guys, you can see here, I got them all put in. What a pain in the butt that was. Um, it wasn't a hard job. It was more time consuming. Hardest ones were probably those last two, four, six, eight, I would say. This one right here was kind of tough to get to with the upriser for the coolant. That one sucked. Um, but everything else kind of here forward was fairly easy. Number one stud was right here, two, three, then four, then five, and six. And it kind of circled a circle pattern. But turned out all right. I got the first torques done. That was uh, the 100 foot pounds. Now I'm gonna go to 115, then I'm gonna go to 130, then I'm gonna go to 145, and then tighten it off again with 150. And that's where I'm gonna leave the final torque. Um, once I'm done that, I'll throw the rockers back on, um, and then I'll do the valve adjustment, valve lash adjustment. Um, and then I still gotta cut out this portion right here of the rocker box so it'll fit over the stud back there now and that should really be about it um, and then it just all goes back together um, right now I'm not a top dead center I thought I was it says it's at TDC on the on the um, the actual which we'll call it um, the fluid damper but I got to do a 360 degree evolution to get that um, fluid damper again to top dead center so I can adjust it how the directions say the glacier diesel performance um, instructions say so I don't know if I'm gonna get to that tonight but this is all gonna be one video so I'll show you guys how I got the top dead center and what I used to get there I didn't use the barring tool like they said for the actual putting it on the flywheel and spinning it it's right behind the turbo it's actually facing aft so the opening is kind of like it's almost like the opposite side of where your starter's at there's a little block off plate so i'm not going to do that i'm actually just going to turn the um fluid damper with a half inch drive wrench and a 15 millimeter head and just turn it i was trying to pull them off so i can actually put my um, barring tool that i got from fleece on there but those bolts ain't coming loose right now and it's no skin off my butt if i don't get it installed and i get the the head studs done um, the whole reason I bought that was to so I didn't have to do the barring tool inside of the uh, flywheel to catch it. So I bought that to do what I'm doing now. But if I don't need it, then I'll just do it another time when I say I'd, when I do my fluid damper. So yeah, that's it for right now. Uh, I'm gonna go around and I'm gonna um, do the torques on them. Like I said, 115, 130, 145, and then top it around with 150, um, and then start putting her back together. All right, guys, got the rockers back on. Those are pretty easy. Uh, just make sure when you put these Y bridges back on, there's a like a dot, like a braille dot. You can see it um, right on. No, you're not gonna be able to see it. Anyway, there's a dot, an elevated dot on that side. Um, that goes towards the back end, so aft goes towards the back end. Um, I just made sure they all went on the way they came off. So still haven't adjusted them yet. Um, gonna be doing that here soon. I just did the rocker box. Let's go over here. Tuck, what are you doing? Come here. So the rocker box, I had to 
chisel away. Let me pull this up. Not chisel away, but I did like a, a little grind right there. I already test fit it. I just used this little bit that's uh that came with my Dremel tool. I'm shocked, but it worked. So um yeah, I just washed this off with some water, made sure I got all the shavings off of it. I'm gonna dry it before I put it back on the on the truck. And then um I'll torque that down and then I'm actually gonna do the valve lash adjustment. So we'll see how that goes. I don't think I'm gonna have to do anything, but uh yeah, give her a good honest shot. All right, guys, I don't know if you can see this real well, but I got the uh, camera going. I got the light on. So when we're checking valve lash, what we're checking is this your exhaust side, this your intake side. What you're checking is the clearance between here, this little dial that pulls up in the Y bridge. So your exhaust side is supposed to be 0 0.2, 0 0.2 or 2 20 thousandths clearance. So what you want to do is lift that up, put that feeler gauge in there, slight drag, not a lot. And pull it out so you're gonna check one three and five on the or excuse me one two four on the exhaust side I believe yeah I might have that backwards one three and five on the exhaust side and then one three and five on the in, one three and five on the intake one two one two and four on the exhaust so like I said you're pretty much just gonna check the Y bridge the clearance here you're gonna check your intake, it's the same thing, but it's gonna be 10 thousandths of, 10 one thousandths of an, uh, clearance. And you're just gonna stick it between there and get the clearance. I didn't have to adjust anything, truck's got 31,000 miles on there, so it's all good, so like as it came off, thank God, because I didn't really wanna mess with this, but the way you adjust it is you would unlock this nut, and then you would unlock this nut right here, I'll point it one, maybe you see closer, and then go into, take an Allen key, and then screw into that adjustment right there. And that's how you would get this to pivot up or pivot back. That's how you would adjust the crank or adjust the uh, clearance. Hopefully that helps explain the uh, lashing or the valve lash adjustment. Start putting your screws on. Put them on hand tight. There's no reason to go crazy and then give them a little tug with the, uh, with the, the ratchet. But nothing tighter than like... I mean, I almost feel like I could just do this with my hands. There's no really reason to actually put a torque on these things. You snap one of these off, you're out, you know, a couple hundred bucks for an injector, if not more. So just be careful when you're doing this part. <clears throat> just slides back in there, nothing crazy. Get the seal and all the tabs go inside. And then connect your harness back up. Put your valve cover back on. If you guys have any comments comment below please click the subscribe button i'm trying to grow this channel i'm doing projects slowly but surely and i don't know what my next project is so if you guys have any ideas you know comment below what you guys would like to see done um and then maybe one day we'll go in an in-depth overview of what the truck actually has done to it so you guys can see what it's done to it and where i want to take it as you saw in some of my past videos if you've watched uh those it tells you what i want to do um, one of the things I did do lately was I contacted SNS Diesel and I asked them about doing a nozzle swap for the truck instead of just buying the injectors. Um, and I was thinking about doing a 150, 150% um, over injector. And my, my goal is 800 horsepower daily driver, nothing crazy. Uh, still got the stock trans. So what I want to do is 150% nozzle, or not nozzle, injector. And what I do is I pull the old uh, injectors that I have now, send them to SNS Diesel. They balance them and make sure they're good to even do that. And then they do the, they do the injector, uh, the nozzle swap and send them back to you. Um, I think my truck's only got 31,300 ish miles on it right now. So they said that would cost me about 1600 bucks shipped um there the work done and shipped back if my if my injector bodies themselves were good to go so that's another alternative if you guys are looking at doing that uh if you guys are looking at doing um injectors soon if you don't want to spend four or five grand like all these other um, companies have i mean it is what it is you gotta you gotta pay to play i get it and i understand that um, but if i can save myself a little bit of money and do it the right way then i'll try to try to do that as well um, I'm looking at going with a 12 millimeter pump 
from SNS. Um, I'm open to other other uh, brands as well, but I, I don't know if XRG does the same thing as SNS when it comes to swapping the nozzles. I don't know. I haven't done any research on them yet. I just knew that SNS did do it, so I contacted them. But yeah, that's it for this video, guys. So if you have any questions, uh, please hit me up. Um, be sure to check out my Instagram. It's the same as my uh, YouTube channel. And if you have any comments, comment below. Please click subscribe. And if you want to see anything else on the channel, please let me know in the comments. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time.